Hi, my name is Scott Simpson and today we'll be talking about monoprotic acids. So what are monoprotic acids? Well, monoprotic acids are acids that have one acidic proton. So let's give a generic example of a monoprotic acid, HA. So let's get rid of this. Um, so we can have a basic monoprotic acid, let's call it HA. And when we toss HA in solution, so we add water to it, what will end up happening is an equilibrium will form where we produce a hydronium ion, H3O+, it's also known as just H+, and our anion, A-. Notice how I'm writing AQ under each one of these. Now, if we notice this is an equilibrium, which means we can write an equilibrium constant for this reaction. It's known as Ka. So, Ka. And just like a normal equilibrium constant, it's defined by products over reactants. So, just as we follow with equilibrium constants, we exclude pure solids and pure liquids. So we're not going to include the H2O plus in our equilibrium constant. So our equilibrium constant would look something along the lines of H3O plus A minus all over the concentration of our original acid, HA. And that's how we define Ka at least for a monoprotic acid. For uh, diprotic and triprotic acids, you can have Ka1, Ka2, or Ka3 in the case of triprotic acids. So let's look at a basic example then. So let's say we have a relatively weak acid. Um, let's look at acetic acid. So acetic acid is a weak acid. So let's assume we have acetic acid here. So some people may write acetic acid like this. Or it's also sometimes expressed as a C like that. Where the AC stands for acetic or acetate. So acetate is the anion that forms when you toss acetic acid in solution. So let's say we have 0.10, we mix up a 0.01 molar solution of acetic acid. What is the pH going to be? And what is the concentration of the acetic acid, um, of the hydronium ion, and of the acetate anion once we've reached equilibrium? Well, first thing is first, we have to write a reaction for this. So, just like our generic acid, we have something along the lines of our generic acid, or in this case, our acetic acid is an aqueous solution, plus water, H2O, pure liquid, and it ends up going to our hydronium ion, H3O+, also aqueous, plus our acetate anion. So, we can also draw an ice diagram for this. So what is an ice diagram? Well, what you end up doing is you end up drawing or writing out the chemical um, reaction occurring for your system and you determine what is the, the initial concentration for I, C is the change in the concentrations, and E is the concentration of the species at equilibrium. So we're going to have three columns. So we're going to exclude water because there's so much water, we really just don't care about it. And then these two. So initially I said we start off with an initial concentration of 0.1 molar of acetic acid. This is before the equilibrium has occurred. So we have no H3O plus and we have no acetate anion. So these values are zero. 
Next, we need to determine what is going to be the change of our reactants or our products after we've reached equilibrium. So, if we just generally assume that one of our acetic acids is going to be consumed, we're going to produce one of each of these, both the hydronium ion and the acetate ion. So, we're going to have a change of positive X for these two because they're going to be produced and we're going to have a negative X for our acetic acid because it's going to be consumed in order to make these two. Next, at equilibrium, what you do is you add your I to your C. So in the case for acetic acid, we have 0 0.1 minus X. In the case of these other two, since we have no initial concentration of either the hydronium ion or the acetate ion, they're just going to be X. All right, so what do we do beyond this point? Next, we toss them into our Ka expression, or equilibrium expression. And after we do that, we just have to use some algebraic manipulation in order to solve. for our concentrations. All right, so if you remember the equation I just wrote down, so we have Ka, it's products over reactants. So in this case, it's our hydronium ion concentration times our acetate ion concentration, all divided by our acetic acid concentration. Now remember, this is for a weak acid. And you can look up these Ka values, which I've already done. In this case, our Ka is equal to 1.80 times 10 to the minus 5. Now you can find these values usually in the appendix of your chemistry textbook, or you can find them online. Wikipedia usually has them also. All right, so we know our concentrations. So, or at least we're going to figure out our concentrations. So all we have to do is sub in our variables that we have from our ice diagram. So in the numerator we have x times x, in the denominator we have 0 0.100 minus x. I added an extra sig fig because it will help us out later. Um, and that is going to be equal to this guy right here. Well let's do some algebraic manipulation. So we end up at x squared over 0 0.100 minus x is equal to 1.80 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now we need to do some more algebraic manipulation. So x squared is equal to 1.80 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 1.00 minus x. A little bit further, x squared, so 1.80 times 10 to the negative 6 minus 1.80 times 10 to the negative 5th times x. A little bit further manipulation, which I'm going to do over here. So all I'm going to do now is subtract the right side from the left to get a zero over here and form a quadratic equation, in which case you can solve for x. So x squared plus 1.80 times 10 to the minus fifth times x minus 1.80 times 10 to the minus sixth is equal to zero. We can solve our quadratic equation. You can either use your calculator or you can use the formula. I've already done this for us. And you come to a solution that has two answers. So x is equal to negative 1.35 times 10 to the minus 3, or it is equal to 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So which one of these answers makes sense? 
Well, we can't have a negative x value because if you remember our ice diagram, we started off with a concentration of zero for our acetate ion. We can't get any less than zero, or we can't have less than zero acetate ions because that makes no physical sense. So this is our answer right here for x. Now, if you go back to your ice diagram, you remember the H3O plus ion. At equilibrium, the concentration of this was equal to x, which we just solved for. So 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. This was also the same value for acetate anion, which was equal to x, which is also equal to 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3 molar and our concentration of acetic acid was equal to 0 0.10 minus x, which is equal to 0 0.0987 molar. What about our pH? Well, if you remember the equation for pH, it's actually just the negative log of your hydronium ion concentration. So, now that we have our hydronium ion concentration, all we need to do is just plug and chug. So, pH is equal to the negative log of our hydronium ion concentration. Now notice this little p. All that means is just take the negative log of whatever um, species you're looking for. So in the case of pKa, all you do is you take the negative log of the Ka, which I'll have another YouTube video about in a little bit. All right, so we just take the negative log of our x value, which is 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. An interesting thing about taking the negative log of something, if you notice our exponent for our uh, hydronium ion concentration is 10 to the minus 3, which means we're going to end up with a pH around 3. This should save you some time on multiple choice questions if you have to do them, but just keep in mind, if you just look at the exponent, your value should be somewhere around there, so it'll help you check your math also. So if I end up doing this, what I end up with is a value of 2.88. Now the question is, does this make sense? Well, yes it does. We're looking at um, a weak acid. So we should have a pH that is less than 7 because it's an acidic solution. And if we look at the concentration of our hydronium ion, we have, if we take the negative log of something that's close to 10 to the negative 3, we should get something around 3, in which case we do. So I hope I've been clear in explaining how you can go about solving for the pH of monoprotic acids. I hope you learn how to use ice tables properly. If you have any other questions, please let me know. I'll be including another tutorial on KW and PKA and PKB. Um, in a, probably about a week. So thank you very much for your time, and if you have any questions, please uh, leave them below. Thank you.